Good evening, Lake Orion. I'm hosting, I guess, is this the fourth time this week or third? I think third. Well, I'm your host, and I am Between Terminas. <laughs> Yes, indeed. This is Between Terminas here on ONTV. Sammy, how you doing? Eh, hanging in there. Um, I do want to give a serious update on Ian. Um, Ian recently had ACL surgery last week and um, said to be doing well. Is in, is in very high spirits. Ian, come back home soon. Get better soon, my friend. It's been a while. We miss you. Well, let's talk about the Lions. I mean, the Lions are... The Lions lost the Steelers. Six and four they're sitting at. Then they have the the Tampa Bay the Tampa Bay Buccaneers coming up, and then they have the Packers on Thanksgiving. So this was this was their three games in eight days. They had a and chance to win this game against Pittsburgh. Why would you why would Jim Shorts decide to be like a la Mark D'Antonio and go for a fake field goal? It doesn't work in the NFL. College football doesn't work. It does work or doesn't? It does not work. In How does it not football, work? Michigan State did it to success no, against Nebraska. In college football it works. In the NFL it doesn't work. In, the NFL, in college football because Michigan State's got a coach that is willing to take the gambles and the risks. And coach, D, coach D is a risk taker. Jim Schwartz on the other hand, why would you take a... You're up 27-23. Kick the three points. You're up by a touchdown. You know, instead, if you let Pittsburgh score, you tie the game at 30-30, and then all you got to do is go get a stinky field goal and win. You know, you it's think, with all Jim Shorts' fault in this game. Do you think David? Do you think that he trusts David Akers? I would if it's a 25-yard field goal. Well, if you look at well, if you look at maybe he didn't, but I mean, why did? It was Sam Martin who fumbled the ball. Right, but you know, I would agree with you. Why would Jim Schwartz take that risk? Did he want to go up 10? Did he want to go up? Did he want to go up or, you know, afraid that Pittsburgh would come back? It, it, look at this here. If the Lions connect on a field goal, you're up by seven points. I understand you want to be greedy. You want to be greedy. But that was not the time to go for it on fourth down. That was not the time. You know, I agree it wasn't the time. I think I think that, you know, Jim Schwartz in many ways cost the Lions that game, especially with his decision making, his play calling, but also the Lions offense did not show up in the second half. Where was that Calvin Johnson in the second half? He didn't have a catch. Matthew Stafford struggled in that game. He had interception after He got pick. picked off, got picked up by the Pittsburgh touchdown. I mean like you could feel after that that fake field goal that the momentum was shifting. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, led by Ben Roethlisberger, took advantage of it. So you think that the so you think Pittsburgh was very opportunistic? Yes. And now Pittsburgh is right back in the thick of it in the AFC, just mm -hmm. one game back of the New York Jets for that last final wild card spot. Who would ever thought we'd be talking about the Jets and the Steelers in the wild card? That would be weird. So the like Kansas City obviously is going to get one of those spots. Mm -hmm. So the Lions play. So the Lions now they got Tampa Bay this week. Revis Island or no? Wait. Yeah, Revis, yeah, Revis Island, Island goes against Megatron. So Megatron visits Revis Island. What do you think about that matchup? Revis Island's going to own Megatron. The key's going to be is can Stafford trust the second and third string receivers? You know, I don't think Lido Ross is that good of a receiver, and it's been proven that the Lions can drop footballs, but the but the game is indoors. And it's at the Lions' comfortable zone as being indoors. But the Lions have a history of losing at home, as we saw the Who days. Yes, that is true. Mm -hmm. And also the Lions have had some big and wins. And Tampa Bay's won one. two in a row. Right, so with Tampa Bay surging, but does Tampa Bay have the weapons to compete with the Lions? Offensively, no, because Mike Glenn's a good receiver. you got Mike Williams, who's good. And then you got the um, their running back actually had a really nice game last week against the Arizona Cardinals. But... 
You know? Arizona's not that impressive. Arizona's a good defense. Um, not that impressive. No, they're a good defense. I mean, if you look at it here, I think Tampa Bay, for some reason, upsets the Lions this week. Why? Why? Really? Because they why? got a running attack. They're they're improving much better. Mike Glennon's starting to get get better, you know. And then the defense, Reva Silas. Darrell Rivas, he's going to have at least two picks against Matthew Stafford. Well, then, what? It, but I, I just think the if you look at it on paper, the Lions have more offensive weapons. And also, it seems like the Lions have the better defense. It really seems like the Lions, are they should win this game. And then going into Green Bay, which is the big one for Thanksgiving. Aaron Rodgers will play in that game. He will play. He will play this week. He will play this week. Mark my words. You think Aaron Rodgers is going to play this week? He will play this week. So, but uh, the realization of it is the Lions are tied with the Bears for the first for first place in the NFC North. Mm-hmm. The Packers the are a game breaker. down. They own the tiebreaker. Yes, the Lions own the tiebreaker. Do you think going forward it's going to be a three-team race, or do you think the Packers are going to come back and dominate? Well, if Aaron Rodgers comes back, Green Bay is going to come back and dominate that mm-hmm. division. You know, but it all comes down to the Lions are going to need to battle for survival. Do I think this team's got enough to survive? No. But you don't I think, think Jim, so? I think Jim Schwartz, his job is still on the line. That loss last night, yesterday to Pitt, I mean on Sunday to Pittsburgh, proved to me that Jim Schwartz, his job security just got a little hotter. So you think so going so going forward, you think that you think that the Lions have to win. So this is a must win game for the Lions next week. Yes. So going forward, yes. Okay. So any other any other teams in the NFL you're impressed with? You know I'm impressed with the um. We can't say they lost to Denver, but I know Denver's a very good team. But you know what team I'm impressed with? The Carolina Panthers. Ooh. They're six and three. Mm-hmm. They got a game. They got a game against New England, mm-hmm. and of course they're rolling right now. Right. Cam Newton is their quarterback. Their defense is stingy. Mm-hmm. Very good. You know it wouldn't surprise. And they and of course. They went in San Francisco and beat San Francisco. That was very impressive. That is the team that I think is going to surprise people watching the playoffs. You watch Carolina Panthers. They're not only going to make the playoffs, but I think they're going to make a long playoff run. But you, well, if you look at the playoff matchups today, the Lions would be having a home game against the 49ers. You imagine that type of matchup? The Lions will not win that game against San Francisco. You really think? I'm sorry. Their defense is lethal. If Kyle Kaepernick gets his act straight, they're going to be just fine. Well, going forward, going forward, you said Carolina was the most impressive. Do you think that um, who uh, who do you do you think that um? We need to bring up the Cowboys briefly. I mean, um, the Dow- the Cowboys had a bye week. Obviously, we watched them get hurt by New Orleans. Do you think the Cowboys make some big time adjustments or no? No. Because I think that Dallas um, defensively has got to get better. Um, offensively, they got to get better. They're still in the NFC East race. They're only uh-huh. game back of the Eagles. Yes, I mean, e- either way, you got got a couple competitive races going on in the NFL. Yeah. And we'll have to see how it goes. I mean, mm-hmm. the Lions play the Bucks. We'll have to see how it goes and go on from there. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll be right back to Between Terminas. We're going to talk a little bit of NCAA action here on Between Terminas on ONTV. <laughs>
Welcome back to Between Terminas here on ON TV. This Ian list between Terminas, you know? See this blank, this, this blank, it's chair? Oh, well. Ian, get better soon. We got, um, let's talk about the NCAA. NCAA football first. Michigan State, very, very impressive against Nebraska. On cue to win the Legends Division and to play Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship. Well, with Michigan State, I mean, you got to give props. Their defense, I mean, like, yeah, their defense gave 28 points, but, you know, but their, I mean, like, their offense started to click. Connor Cook is clicking. Keith Mumphreys did well. Garrett Kings did well. But they got a running game this year. Jeremy Langford. He is for real. I mean, like, this guy, I mean, like, Michigan State, nobody knew about this offense. But then ever since they benched Max and went for Connor Cook, this offense has really taken off. I mean, like, this this defense, I mean, this off with this offense and this defense, it wouldn't surprise me if this group beats Ohio State because I'm not throwing Ohio State's defense. I think Michigan State can go in there if they do play Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship game. I think they can beat Ohio State. I think they can because even with their great defense, with their great offense for Ohio State, I just think Michigan State's defense is that much better than Ohio State. Do you, but do you think the Legends division is a little bit down this year? Nebraska obviously lost Taylor Martinez, not the best team this year. Michigan, we've seen their struggles. Um, Northwestern, Northwestern been they've been very disappointing. I mean, actually, Minnesota, not, really. not bad. Actually, not really. Minnesota's actually been doing very well. They've been riding an emotional high with Jerry Kill, you know, having going down the seizure. They've been benefiting, you know, a lot with the emotional card. But the game that will describe Minnesota would be the game at East Lansing against Michigan State. I don't think they'll win that game, but Minnesota's a team that you got to keep an eye on, you know. I mean, they're not bad. Michigan this year, Michigan this year is an absolute mess. Mm -hmm. um, and then Northwestern had a really rough year. It started off 4-0 and then they had college game Michigan day there. Overtime. They had a bad loss to Michigan overtime. And now they get Michigan State this week. And then, and then you got Nebraska, of course, their offense, not the same since Taylor Martinez went out, but mm -hmm. their defense has been atrocious, you know. But their defense played better a little bit against Michigan State, but still that defense is not very good. But, so, but you know, obviously let's, let's talk about Michigan briefly, about them playing Northwestern, good overtime win. Um, lucky. 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 Because Drew Dilio comes in and just, like, has to slid for, for the field goal to happen, you know. Northwestern had this game won. Northwestern, not, I mean, like, they had Michigan beat. They stopped them on fourth down, and yet they let Michigan off the hook, you know. And it was in the rain. It was Northwestern's element, and yet they don't come in and get the win. Let's go to college basketball about with some Michigan State. Obviously, Michigan State is on fire in the, sport, in the college sports world, especially in football and basketball. Michigan State now number one in the country. For in the NCAA in the NCAA in the rankings, Michigan State had a very impressive win over Kentucky, and then obviously a not so impressive win against Columbia. Columbia. How in the world do you play horrible against Columbia? Because Columbia caught them at the right time. I mean, like, look at it here. Michigan State's got some. I mean, like, is it lack of competition or getting the getting them ready for games? Is it something? I don't know what this though. I mean, like, Michigan State's. Been for some reason, they get up for the big games, and yet when it's for the little games, they tend to struggle. This is supposed to be an experienced team this year, mm -hmm. you know, and to see them struggle against a team like Columbia, that should not happen. Well, I agree really. it should not happen, but I mean, it, look, but as I said, Columbia probably caught them at the right time. Michigan State had a very emotional win at Kentucky, or against Kentucky. And Kentucky, yeah, a lot of people say that that freshman class is very good. I understand that. But you got to go with experience. I don't think – I think Kentucky's overrated. I think that Kansas, I think they're going to be fine in the Big 12, but mm -hmm. I just think Kentucky's really overrated. I think Duke's overrated. You know, and, I, and you know, it's just – What, what about is. Michigan losing to Iowa State? Big win for Iowa State because I understand Mitch McGarry first game back, but still it's not an excuse. You're supposed to – if you're Michigan, you have a better talent, it's a better superior team, mm -hmm. but yet you come into Ames and then you get beat by Iowa State. I mean, mm -hmm. like, 
Michigan, they're a work in progress, but Nick Stauskas, Mitch I think, McGarry's will be. First game. Yeah, Nick Stauskas, I think, proved he's going to be a good player. I think Michigan will be fine. Oakland, 0-4 right now, playing very tough opponents. Have you ever heard of playing North Carolina, UCLA, and Gonzaga? Those are three ranked teams in the top 25. That is, that is a brutal, brutal schedule. Well, they had a chance against Cal. Yeah, they had a chance against Cal, but still, you know, playing those three teams. You're counting Cal out, aren't you? Yeah, counting Cal, but they should have won that game against Cal. I agree. I mean, like, but that will help them in the Horizon League. That will help. You think that it, you think it, that it will? I, I, I do agree with you. I think that um, playing these type of teams, that's going to help them. But, I mean, at the same time, you gotta war, you got to wonder, you're playing all these tough teams. And depth it's gonna an issue. Get, depth is an issue. And then, you know, how much is playing these tough teams, are they going, is it going to take a toll on you? You know, I mean, you're well, playing said, North Carolina, you're playing UCLA, you're playing Gonzaga. It's surprising the Oakland have at least 10 losses this year, you know, because of that schedule. That's a scary thought. And that, that it looks like it's possible. Well, I mean, and you look at the Horizon League, it's competitive as Wright yeah, State, right Green State, Bay, Green Bay, Green, Green, Green State. State, yep. And Green Bay almost beat Young Wisconsin. State. I know. I mean, that's, you know, that. Mm -hmm. And also, Youngstown State's got a couple of good wins, too. Milwaukee had a pretty good one. I mean, the Horizon League's getting some quality wins, just Oakland's not be one of those teams that's pulling off a quality win. Not yet. And also, North Carolina, as we saw, recently lost to Belmont. That hurts. No, no doubt it hurts. I mean, going forward, you've got, you know, so obviously college football, you know Michigan State's on the right uh, on the path to success. I think Probably Michigan State's Ohio going, State. I think Michigan State's going to go to the Rose Bowl. I I I, I, I like them. I like them against Ohio State. I really mm -hmm. do. And then college basketball, Michigan State seems to be the class of the of of the Michigan teams in college basketball. Mm -hmm. Also, um, you know Michigan obviously had a tough game. Oakland's in a tough stretch. Um, you know, I mean, they've got, got a, it's it's looking very interesting that first week of college basketball. Any notable things in college basketball that you're noticing? Well, I'm very impressed with them. You know, the freshmen over at the freshmen. You know, like how it's, I'm. I don't like the fact that it's gone freshman oriented a mm -hmm. little bit with the David Stern crybaby rule, the one and done. I just think that they need to play at least two, three, um, at least three years. I think before they think about going to the NBA. Obviously, that's for a topic for another day. Um, any last words? Well, you got to look at Michigan State. I think this week they're going to beat Northwestern. Michigan plays at Iowa this week. I like Iowa over Michigan, and I like Michigan State over Northwestern. Nice. All right. We will be right back. We got a special call out segment of Between Terminas here on BT. <laughs> Hey, Sammy, Anthony, and Ian, this is Dan Miller from Fox 2 News and the voice of the Detroit Lions. Congratulations on two years. A lot of shows don't make it that long, but you guys are obviously doing the right thing, so way to go. Keep it going. Keep doing what you do, and we look forward to talking to you again next year when you hit another anniversary. Until then, we'll talk to you soon. Hey, this is Mickey York from Fox Sports Detroit. When I want to get the inside scoop on local sports, I watch Between Terminus or Fox Sports Detroit. Indeed, welcome back to Between Terminas here on ONTV. It's actually the first day of boys basketball season and also girls basketball season started last week. Yes, yes, yes. Preview, preview shows, shows coming, coming up. up. Yep. Preview boys and girls basketball preview shows. Check Excited your local listings. <laughs> yep, check your check your local ONTV listings for both the boys basketball and girls basketball preview shows here on ONTV. Now, before we start, we want to talk about call outs here. Mm -hmm. Got some interesting call outs. I'm gonna go first. Okay. You know, this week on Twitter, I ended up I end, I, I ended up posting some quote explosive tweets. What I mean by that is I ended up bringing up some tweets that ended up, that caused some emotion, that caused some stir. Well, I'm going to call out the, all the age ant train haters on Twitter. Why? Simple. Look, you got to listen to reasoning. I mean, you guys just don't, you guys, you guys, you have the incentive, you feel like you, that you have to argue with me when I make a good point. You know, 
you guys don't have to argue. You can just agree, say yes. You don't have to be, you know, you don't have to show that defiance, you know. Quite often or not, a lot of people follow me on Twitter. I get that. I understand that. But if you follow me on Twitter to argue with me, then it's not worth it, you know. I mean, I've had to have decisions where I'm considering getting rid of my Twitter. But at the same time, you know, it can be entertaining. It can be spontaneous. It could be creative at times. Though the A-train haters, the ant train haters, at the same time, get off the hate. Talk about love. You should praise me once in a while. I certainly deserve it. That's the truth there. My next call out involves two guys that certainly deserve the recognition that, you know, first call out Ian Weatherspoon and then also my brother Sammy. Ian, why? Well, it's simple. You haven't been here the last few weeks. I understand the condition, obviously, with the ACL. But at the same time, Ian, you know, I'm starting to become the third most popular character on the show behind you and Sam. Why? How did that happen? How did that happen? I don't know how. I mean, Ian, when you're here, you tend to make sh the things interesting. You tend to make things, but I mean, lately you haven't been here. Ian, you need to come back. I miss you, man. You know, you really need to come back. And also Sammy. Do you have to really scream? I can't believe it. Who are you? A lot of people, I mean, it's just that simple. I mean, you can go, who are you? And without having to scream. At the same time, you know, kids look up to you. I understand that. Kids are just more, you know, kids, they can be crazy sometimes. You know, I don't mind that kids look up to you. You're a good role model. I understand that. But at the same time, Sammy, you know, these kids need to start looking up to real role models like myself. They don't have to look up to you. You suck. Thanks. All right. My first call out here, I'm going to call. I'm very disappointed with the, um, with the people who go up to the heavens and believe that the Detroit Lions are going to be God and come in. Well, I'm going to call you out. Why? Here's why. They're, you think that they're going to come back from the heavens and they're going to come and save us all by making the playoffs again and winning a, cha and winning a, cha winning a playoff game for the first time since 1991. It ain't going to happen! You just showed why! The Pittsburgh Steelers winning and just tore you guys to shreds! You don't deserve to be in the playoffs! The Chicago Bears! You beat them twice! Green Bay! If you had the, you can't beat them with Aaron Rodgers! If they put Matt Flynn on it, then you're still not gonna beat them! The Lions fans, it's time to get away from it all and turn and turn and turn to the Detroit, turn to another team and support a team like, like of course, a good, good friend of mine who's a girls basketball player, Sarah Voss and her Green Bay Packers. What? Yeah, and my friend Jeff Krasinowski also with the Green Bay Packers. What? Yeah, they're a good team. Green Bay's a good role modeling city. Wow. Yes. And also my next call here, this guy is a hypocrite. Guy can't win in fantasy um, football against me. Um, this guy says he's a role model for children, but he's not. What? But this guy is known as Anthony Terramina. Anthony Terramina, why? I don't know who this guy is. The Colorado Avalanche is the worst team in hockey. They don't even, they don't even have, they have a, a, a crybaby coach for, crybaby goalie for head coach. But also, here's the thing. You can't beat me in track. You can't beat me in... You can't beat me in sports. You can't beat me in fantasy sports. You can't even beat me in hockey. What can you beat me in? You can't beat me in anything! You can't! Who are you? You can't beat me in nothing! You know who I am. I, this guy is not even, this guy does not deserve to be a role model. What? This guy, this guy needs to bow down to my feet and what? recognize how the older brother is more superior than the younger brother. And then my last call out here is I'm going to call out a guy that, um, that really need, deserves this so bad. Name is Mitch. Mitch Palmero. Why? You said I was got, I didn't respond for two weeks because I had to, wait, wait, I had to look at it here. And then I realized something. 
You're not even in my league! Who are you? You're not even in my league! I am here, and you're like down here! Ooh, that's harsh. That's how it is! I'm a winner! You want to cry, baby, all you want? That's fine! That's fine! What does that mean? You should just go like this! All the time! What? And then three the night away! Yep. Okay, first thing is first here. I'm going to address what you say that I should, I am not a role model for children. Nope. That I should bow down to you. Yep. How, how could you? What do you have to say for yourself? You know, these kids to bow down to me eventually and become Stars fans. Well, the thing is, the, thing is, these, the, the kids that I talk about, obviously, they need, to, they need to respect their elders. They need to respect people like myself who have given, who Are paid the way for them to be successful. Are you an elder? Hey, I'm elder than you are. Yeah, I know that. Hey, I'm elder than you are. So basically, if you say kids should respect their elders, I'm elder. You're saying you're I should respect elder. you. Yeah, you need you're to respect You're saying that me. I should respect you. You need to respect But I do me. respect you. No, you don't. I do respect you. No, you don't. Why is that? Because here's the thing. You want to you insult my hockey team. Not like the Wings. Except I know, except that city of Detroit needs, except the, um... Well, we both agree about the Wings. We both agree that Detroit, right. Wings are we dead. both agree but, about the Wings. And, of course, right now we're both happy that they're on a winless streak. Yeah, that's true. Though. And, of course, here's the thing. When Dallas beats Colorado, every time, it gets me so happy, and you have to shut up. You have to shut up. Has Dallas beaten Colorado at all this season in the regular season? Mm. No. You know why? You can't. You 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 you, 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 can't, you don't have nothing on me. You really don't have nothing on me. You look at and you want to talk about respect. I write about you in my books, and I give you such a big role in my books that you that you you know that you should you should appreciate what I do. You know, I'm the one that works the hardest. I'm the one. You know, and had it not been for me, I don't think you'd be successful. Are you done? No, I'm not done. I've got, I've got, you know, if you look at, I mean, if Garver and Hood and she -Ra, I'm going to beat you in track. I'm going to use all this ammunition on you in the springtime when my kids from Scripps are going to be pounding and living daylight out of Walden. We'll have to see about that, you know. But let's look at the bigger picture. Let's focus on, you know, ultimately the bigger picture is we get all the shot putters from Walden, Scripps, and Oakview. They all come on Lake Orion for Lake Orion track. And Lake Orion track, especially in Shaput and Discus, ends up dominating. That's going to be the happiest moment for both you and I. That is true. You that know. is true. So if you look at it right now, we are creating a mission state, even with Ian, who's not here today. You know, we, we, we are creating a standard bearer for Lake Orion, Shaput and Discus, I hope. And, of course, we all can't wait for hockey when the playoffs start, when the Stars start winning and whipping Detroit in the playoffs. But the Wings and the Stars are in different leagues. Yeah, but Detroit won the Eastern Conference. Uh, right in the way they're playing right now, you're right. The way they're playing, Detroit will not make the playoffs. Heck, if I, if Stars are in the Eastern Conference, Stars will be in the playoffs right now. All right. Have a great night, Lake Gorian. Have a great night between Terraminas. Yeah.